wanted to share a few things that maybe you hadn't thought of. Although I'm pretty sure you probably already heard it from someone, but do you realize this, that you are a missionary at large? Yep. You've been commissioned from the moment you got saved with a mission. You know, commissioned with a mission. You've been directed by God himself, giving you his Holy Spirit to instruct you and to teach you and to guide you, but also to imbue you with power that you should go out and be his witnesses, not just to those that are unsaved, but even to those that are saved. Because sometimes people that you think are saved may need to watch and see what your life in dealing with God on a personal basis. Now, as a missionary at large, that means that you have a responsibility. You have a calling. You have a mission to do something. And that doing something is really just simply sharing what you've learned. You know, whatever it is you read today, talk about it. Tell someone about it. Tell someone what it is you read today in the Bible. You see, it's not anything that needs to be super special or super anointed or even appointed by some directional, oh my God, you know, feeling that you have. The reality of a missionary is that most of what a missionary does is pretty practical and what might, some people might say, boring, in the sense of they have to do the work behind the scenes as well as those few moments that they are in obvious vision of people in front of them. I know for myself when I went on missions, you know, I went to build churches, so oftentimes I worked behind the scenes doing things like construction or, or framing or, you know, even hand, handing things to people. But because I was also an interpreter, I was able to be used in that capacity. So sometimes I wound up in front of, you know, crowds or people, you know, interpreting what the missionary in charge, so to speak, was sharing. And then I would be dragged out by different people that wanted me to interpret for them and you know, share for them. And so it's not always really the things that you think that a missionary is. It's what God says you are. He says, go and teach all nations. And the only thing you can do is teach what you know. You can only relate what you've read. You can only talk about what you know about. Because if you try to do anything else, if you try to talk about something you don't know, believe me, nobody's going to listen to you. You might be still a missionary, and you might have a mission, but your message really isn't going to mean anything to anybody because it won't have God helping the person to hear what it is you're saying. Now, the interesting thing is, when you go on a mission, which is your everyday life, you're waking up from the moment that you open your eyes, you're on a mission from God. You're like those Blues Brothers, you know, you're on a mission from God. Well, God has given you a mission to be a light to the nations. He's given you a mission to be a witness to the angels in heaven. He's given you a mission to be the witness and the testimony of Jesus Christ to the world so that they may see the hope that lies within you and ask you, why are you not losing it? How come you have peace? Why do you love the ungodly or why do you love even the enemies of say your nation or the enemies of your own faith how can you have mercy when everyone else is very unforgiving why do you forgive when everyone else is judging why do you take the time to care about someone that nobody else cares for that's your mission that's your calling and that's your election so you see when you got saved yeah, there's a certain amount of time that you just kind of like, you know, veg out, you know, like about five minutes, and you just thank God for, you know, getting you saved. But then after that, it's kind of like your mission to tell people, hey, I don't know what I did, but, man, I asked God in my life, and now I'm working on it. And from that moment on, you're a missionary. You have your testimony to share. And that's what a missionary at large does. You see, a missionary at large just lives out his life as though it were a normal life. You know, being directed by God, of course, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. But when you don't know what you're doing, then you're just kind of like doing your normal stuff, but you're letting God direct you, and you 
bring God into the picture in everything you do. You know, you pray over your food, you know, if you choose to. You pray before doing something and asking God to direct you. You pray before you react to something, asking God to give you wisdom. You know, you have relationship with God. And that's what makes you a missionary. That's what makes you someone who has and fulfills the office and the calling of what a missionary is. And I call you a missionary at large because the bottom line is God places you to be anywhere He wants to choose to use you. Whom the Lord says He chooses and uses. And if He chose you, then He's going to use you. He may use you as a vessel of honor, but He might use you as a vessel of wrath. So His choices are up to Him to decide. But Jesus said it this way, the wind bloweth whither it will. You need to know where it's coming from, know where it's going. So too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. And that's what your life is about now as a missionary at large. You will be moved, used, and chosen to go different places at different times doing different things that you don't even know yet what they are. You're not even prepared really with some kind of set format because really the structure is unstructured and if you think about what to say beforehand, Jesus said that you're not doing it according to what he said. He said, don't think about what you're going to say when you're brought up before magistrates or you're put in front of people or even when you're being challenged by people who know more than you do. Don't worry about what you say because at that moment, your Father in Heaven will give you the words to say. So really, ever since you ask God into your life, that moment, your reality was changed into something that was God's specialty, and that is making people into missionaries. Your life in this world is not to eat, drink, and be merry and go about your own day, but to take all those things that you normally live and make them a mission, make them a purpose-driven life that is God's purposeful plan for you to accomplish His will in this life, that He has called you to be a testimony of the salvation that he's brought to the entire world. That as he saved you, he can save other people. As he changes you, he can change other people. As you are merciful, he can have mercy on other people. As you are being forgiven, he can be forgiving other people around you. You see, it's really about ministering and touching other people and not just so consumed with yourself. Because the Christian life boils down to other self, not myself. Jesus said it this way, deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. If you have done that and asked Jesus to take your life, then he's telling you what to do with your life and that's to deny yourself, but to take up your cross and to follow Jesus in doing the will of the Father. And God himself, our Father, wants to direct you personally and individually in everything that you do and everything that you say. That's why He gave you the Holy Spirit. That's why you need to ask, if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, to fill you and to baptize you and give you gifts of the Spirit. Really, just to come into your life, you know, and kind of let Him take over. You know, kind of like you did with Jesus. Well, Jesus said He promised He'd give you another comforter, and that is the Holy Spirit. So. Whether you realize it or not, and you've been waiting for your, you know, pie in the sky, your great trumpet sounding, or your your blazoned letters written on the wall, or some kind of like, you know, inspiration to hit you between the eyes, you know, so that you would know, oh, God called me to the ministry. Let me be perfectly clear. Um, God saved you because He put you into ministry. That's what you are. You are a missionary at large. He may do other things with you, whether it be pastor or elder or deacon or whatever it is that God may put in you as an ability or office or part of the body of Christ or body of believers or bride of Christ. But the bottom line is every single born-again Christian, every single person who is called upon the name of the Lord is a missionary at large. They are someone who has Jesus in them, the Son of God. And as such, God has chosen to use them in the capacity of telling other people about His Son. Don't ever think you have to wait for your calling. Don't
Don't think you have to wait for your whole office to be made known. Don't think you have to go out and look for your gift, you know, or your gifting or some weird theological idea that really doesn't come from Scripture, but man. But rather recognize what God said. Go. See, when his disciples were with him, Jesus sent them out two by two. Kind of like a practice ministry for the rest of their life. He said, look, I want you to go into the, the cities and the highways and the byways and tell them and heal the sick, raise the dead, you know, freely receive, freely give. Don't take any extra cloak or don't take any coat or anything extra. Just go do it. Just go do like I'm telling you to do. And tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, they did. And when they came back, they were shocked. They said, ah, it worked. Well, I got news for you. You're a missionary at large. Ooh, almost took over, didn't I? God pushed me back up. You're a missionary at large. It's time for you to go do the same. 